Sand is something that's, you know, we all feel exotic and, and it's exotic and attractive. Um, but actually, we went to the real desert ourselves. We did research on how people actually work in the sand. It's tough. It's not, you know, exciting. And uh, so what we did is, through artistic exaggeration, we make the sand climbing and the sand surfing slightly easier and, and, and slightly more beautiful. We, we, we wanted to capture the feeling of being in the sand without necessarily simulate 100% of how real sand reacts. Uh, so when we work on the feeling of the sand, it's more like waterboard surfing, ski and uh, snowboarding, uh, you know, and that kind of uh, experience. The reason we founded that game company is to push the envelope of what video game can communicate as a medium in terms of the emotional experience. If I would be making a sequel, I have to be faithful to what it works, and then that would mean I'm trying to make the same feeling, you know, and uh, that is very limiting. Uh, and I really think to create, to bring something new is more valuable for the industry than, you know, making sequels of the same game. Of course, if you make sequel, you will probably make more money because it's easier to make and it's free market. But that's just not my interest. You know, it's like, well, we have the fly in the sky, swimming in the water, you know, kind of flowing through the grass field, the land. You know, is there anything else we haven't touched, you know, in this world? You know, there's volcanic lava, <laughs> there's the desert. So we decided to do the desert. Uh, it is still floating. You surf through the sand, you, you, any power you get, you get to fly into the sky and glide. Um, and there are quite a few levels that gives you aquatic feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. So it, I'm, I'm not betraying myself. I think, you know, for people who really wanted to get the full experience of journey, they should try to play a game alone, but also to play a game with someone else. The journey is a game where our goal is focusing on creating a feeling that nobody has experienced in the game, you know, in the gaming uh, industry. Um, and particularly, it, it's a feeling between two people over the internet. You know, it's not about two people sitting on a couch. It's about complete strangers over the internet. Because I feel there's strong negative association about what people playing games over the internet are and people don't like to play with strangers in general but I just felt you know there's nothing wrong about the people who are playing they're all human beings uh, why has people uh, players had so much negative association with uh, and assumptions about another human being over the internet and I want to change that so the only way we can change that is by creating a game where strangers over the internet actually come together, really, you know, have an emotional bond well, with each other. And so, so the project is all about creating an environment to inspire players to work collaboratively and to really be together and going through an emotional journey so that in the end, they actually like them and they will miss them. Flow was more about a dynamic difficulty adjustment applied for the flow game so that both people who had hardcore experience and people who never played the game can play the game at a different pace so they don't get ahead of themselves and be really challenged by the game and give up. Uh, in Flower, uh, because of the way we design the game, the flow problem has already been solved based on how we you know, give the player choices to approach the game. So, nothing is forcing you to be playing the game super fast or super hardcore. So it's not no longer a problem. In Flower, we're applying the three-act stru structure from 
Hollywood screenwriting, you know, how you create a compel compelling emotional arc in a story. Uh, and in Flower, that's what the, the series is about, is whether can we create an emotional roller coaster to drive the player to feel a strong sense of emotion at the climax. In order to create a story that's compelling, and imagine if this is the intensity of the story from the beginning to the end, if it's flat, people will fall asleep because it's boring, right? If it's just become more exciting, more exciting, more exciting, yes, at the beginning it will work, but after a while the acceleration becomes constant, so people fall asleep again. So the only way you can grab people's attention is by creating roller coaster is uh, you know rise and falls and the three act structure is about creating a first act you know establishing the problem going up become more exciting mm -hmm. then the second act goes down and then the third act it goes up so that that up is so strong that will actually create a cathartic reaction in the audience uh, so flower is very much about following that three act structures and evoke a strong emotional climax. Uh, and journey carries the flow theory; it carries the three act structure, but we are applying, uh, you know, additional theories on sociology and, uh, you know, uh, mythology. Like journey is based on uh, a, a mythological story structure called the, the hero's journey. It's, and the hero's journey is really about the transformation happening in our life. It could be about the transformation of a person over a couple of days, but it could also be about a person transformed through the entire life. Uh, and it is surprising that the three-act structure and the uh, hero's journey and the people's stage of life have a surprising overlap. And I just feel like it would be awesome if you can bring two players together over the internet not just having them play together for a little bit, uh, but having them going through the life's beginning to mature, to you know the the moment where you are lost, and to regain your focus, to struggle, and eventually to reach transcendence. And having the player going through this life transformation together, and really creating a shared emotional roller coaster ride together. And I hope that way when the two players finish the game, it's not just like, wow, that was some difficult time. It's, it's like, we've been through the whole life cycle. You know, it, it's a strong emotional bond. Uh, I think my style is about elegant beauty. It's a very romantic style. Uh, and uh, when, I mean, it's not about like the intimacy of a roman romance, but romantic is like trying to show the beautiful part of the world, you know, through, through what we do. It's, um, you know, I was uh, quite inspired by uh, Hayao Miyazaki's film from Studio Ghibli. Uh, and uh, man, one of the main reasons is that I didn't grow up in, a, in the States, or I didn't grow up in Japan, but I have to make games that both America and Japanese wants to play. And I have to really look around to see what kind of entertainment content was popular among both Western and Eastern society. And Studio Ghibli's work has, has been always kind of my one of my favorite. Um, and I read a book about the, the studio's founding and a book about Miyazaki and an analysis on him. It's about, they're saying that because the subject uh, Miyazaki's film is about are always about peace uh, child, uh, innocence, uh, nature, love, you know, and the sense of flight, the dream of flight, almost in all his movies. And I was thinking, yeah, the, the reason they are popular is because these are the fundamental, uh, universal appeal, uh, emotional desire and dreams that no matter what culture you're growing up in, you all share. So to me, um, the games you know, we've worked on are about the beauty, the f the, the sense of freedom, the flight, uh, the <coughs> the nature, I guess, and humanity. So, uh, flight has been uh, pretty nice, and it's easy to do. You know, when you move a character in the water, all you need to do is change its position. But if you were to be doing 
uh, you know, let's say uh, Assassin's Creed, it will be very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it is also technologically easier for us to do as a small independent studio.